I'll put on mute. Amen. God bless you, brethren. Yay. Welcome in the name of Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed this morning to see you all, brethren. In preaching to the multitudes, we walk by faith and not by sight. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. So thankful also for the uh, Holy Spirit, and I want to acknowledge him that he is present with us today as is our Father, which art in heaven as is our Jesus, by way of the word of God. So Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you and I thank you for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because you have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance, deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to see their liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So um, hallelujah. God bless us this morning. God bless us and bless our families too in the name of Jesus. Last week we were um, taught uh, about um, faith brings miracles. And what a beautiful teaching it is, you know, to know that Jesus is the way, John 14, 6, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we know that when we hear words of life over this pulpit here, that's a gift as our sister was uh, sharing with us, that's a gift from our daddy for us to take up these words or these seeds that have been given to us from over the pulpit, from off this altar here, from off this platform, and um, receive them as our own gift. Receive them as our own gift. So, uh, brethren, I'm going to continue on with uh, ministering faith to you and I, and that who, who our Jesus um, who he is and how when we received him we received him in faith because we never saw anything give, I didn't see anything physical or tangible that I could touch when I received Jesus so I received him in faith um, so this morning I just you know if we are asked the question uh, what is faith and if we don't know what is faith um, brethren we're not operating then in faith if we don't know what is faith according to the word of God we're not operating or working the word of faith in our lives and yet we've received Jesus in faith see we've received him but we received him as a child or as a seed so if I can just share with you, um, just to get some understanding, the Holy Spirit would have us go to Luke 8, 11. Luke 8, 11, which is familiar to you and I, which is now the parable is this, and a parable is an earthly saying with a spiritual meaning. The parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So when we are um, given our Jesus, we received them in faith, and that was our faith seed. <laughs> you know, he wasn't, we didn't receive the fruit, we received a faith seed. And then what was given to us, again, was a beautiful gift, was the scripture for you and I was John chapter 3, verse 16, another seed. See, so we, we've received that now, we've received John chapter 3, verse 16. Okay, that's another seed. Now, um, for you and I to walk by faith, if we have a look at that scripture, please, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. See, so for me, there's, there's two uh, functions or two systems, two systems that we're operating in. We're operating either in faith or we're operating in sight. Now, the things that we see is things that are fleshly. <laughs> things that are fleshly, as an example, um, before we came to know uh, the scripture, John chapter 3, verse 16, we would not know that revelation that the Lord has um, shared with me, or I would not, that he loves me. And so what will happen is this man here will judge after the sight of her eyes. 
you know, and would make a, a decision according to sight and not according to faith. So there are two systems operating here. Now, the word is taught us in Proverbs chapter 8, 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Two systems, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So death is sin or separation from the promises of God. So before we um, operated or function or worked in faith or walked in faith, we walked in sin. That, that was the system that we operated was sin. Now, the Lord wants us to walk, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, walk by faith and not by sight. And when Jesus came, he came to set us free. That's what my Bible teaches me. He came as the atonement for, for our sins. He was through his blood. You and I were washed. So he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Now, when Jesus comes, came, he came to perform his word. And what we do, and I'm talking about flesh, is we get out of his road. We deny self and let the Lord have his way in us. Now, how does that happen? Well, John chapter 1, verse 1 teaches me, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, so now I have the word. So as the, um, we have been taught in John 3.30, he must increase, I must decrease. So now we've got a spirit and a flesh man. So spirit and flesh, the spirit walks by faith. The flesh walks by sight. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Now, faith is a seed. We receive beautiful seeds, which is the word of God. Faith is a seed and it must be planted or sown or put in. Now, this heart here is where God sent the first miracle seed. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into our heart crying up a father. And that happened because we spoke life with our tongue, confessing our mouth. Believing in their heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. We spoke and received by faith the first miracle seed into our heart, crying out the Father, that's our Jesus. And so if we, if faith is a seed, it must be planted. So we're planting these seeds into our heart, into the soil, this ground, good ground. Now, when we plant it, we do that by saying, speaking, professing confessing that word into our heart and when we say it then we can see it then we can see it spiritually see what the word is saying for us see what faith is understand what faith is so praise the lord we have a seed we sow it to our heart it is planted we sow it by saying or speaking it and then the Holy Spirit and our Father can perform it. Then we see the miracle. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, here's the example of the other system. Now, we either operate in faith or we operate in fear. We operate in the things that we, we uh, so my Bible teaches me, is another scripture that's come out of the pulpit, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now we're hearing the words of, of the Lord, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So he's saying, okay, you want faith? Hear the faith scriptures. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Okay, I've got that. Thank you, Lord. Now, if we're not hearing the word of God, we're hearing the word of the world. We are hearing, you know, see, we, we here have been taught to have a word ruled Mind, word ruled heart, word ruled tongue, word ruled ears, word ruled spirit. 
ruled by the spirit because God is a spirit. Our father is a spirit. So we that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth, according to the book of John chapter 4, uh, verse 23 and 24. Verse 23 and 24. So there is, if we're not speaking faith, if we're not listening to faith, which is the word of the law, then the operation that you and I are carrying out is flesh or fear. Now, here's an example of fear. When you don't know um, that the Lord has healed us, he's saved us, he's healed us, he's rescued us, he's delivered us, and he's set us free, and he's brought to us a miracle of healing in this example here. This tongue... If it doesn't, if it is not ruled by the will, is going to say, and these are the examples. No, I'm catching a cold. It is going to say, oh, look, I've had a test and it says I'm positive for COVID. This tongue of fear of not having a relationship with faith is going to think, say things like, I am sick of life. I've had enough, I'm tired of being broke. And so what's going to happen is the devil, who has been defeated by the word of God, is going to take those words. See, he's waiting. He attends church to see those who are going to slip up. And see, we, that's why we attend, because our Father loves us, lest we let the promises of God slip from us. Now, those who are faith preachers, beautiful lady, when you, when you hear the word of healing, which is Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, right? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. When we hear 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who his own self, uh, take these down, brethren. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, his own self bear our sins in his own body on a tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. See, what happens is we start to activate the seeds of faith. We activate it. So when we speak those words that our Father's given to us from the kingdom of heaven, how? Shri John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus saying to you and I today, another seed of faith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. So now we've come unto our daddy, we have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. We now have kingdom words. We now have faith words that we can, we, the, the Lord's given us power and authority to activate or to speak. So, we will only hear, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we will only hear the fruits of the spirit, as the word taught us last week in the book of Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter, verse 22, you will see there, faith is in there. So the Lord's given us fruits of the spirit. And what happens is when we speak the words of the kingdom, the words of the Lord, the words of everlasting life, the words of the world are no more. Come to nothing. What that does is allows the words of God, uh, we are able to frame our world or frame our future, and it allows us to go forward, or you know, in the power of God moving forward. So we can just keep going forward and push through the mountains, push through doubt, push through unbelief. Hallelujah. Now, every one of us have been given this natural tongue, this tongue. And you've heard us. We thank the Lord for um, the word of God. Hebrews 12, 2, the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. And it is a discern of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 says, so, so shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing to its sin. Now, those are words of authority and words of faith. So we can speak away sickness, poverty, 
hate, anger, jealousy, we can speak those away. If we are speaking anything other than it's not um, faith walk for you and I, the flesh will come in. The flesh will come in and there will be consequences. See, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also read. Can we go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, please? Oh, I love these portions. Actually, I'd like to read from verse 6, uh, page 1623. Just being encouraged. The word is encouraging us. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So sowing, speaking, putting in, depositing, laying up treasures as the word has been teaching us. Laying up treasures. Now, there's still going to be a reap. Whether we sow sparingly or whether we sow bountifully, we are st there is still going to be a reaping, a harvest. Because whatever it is we have spoken, we've spoken in or we've sown that in. So there's going to be a harvest that comes from that. What that harvest looks like between you and our daddy is according to death and life is in the power of our tongue. It's according to what it is we are sowing. Verse 7 says, every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not begrudgingly, or not grudgingly, sorry, the word says, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. See, when we give with a cheerful heart, praise God. Verse 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. See, that's why we celebrate. That's why we get excited because we know we can go to, to our, uh, we can withdraw from the kingdom of heaven. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the fruit of love. And we withdraw because we've deposited John chapter 3, verse 16. I thank you, Father God, for the word of peace because we've sown John chapter 14, verse 27. We've sown scriptures in the internet. We've sown John chapter 16, verse 33. Um, peace, is that peace I live in? No, that's 14, 27. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the word giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These things I have spoken unto you, John 16, 13, that in me you might have peace in the world, in the flesh, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. See, Jesus came to give an answer. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There's a thief out there, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and destroy. But I have come, I have come and you receive me that you might have life and have it more abundantly so this it gives me joy when we are sowing sowing bountifully now verse 9 says as it is written he had dispersed abroad he had given to the poor his righteousness remaineth forever listen to verse 10 now he that ministereth seed seed now the parable is this the seed is the word of god luke 8, 11 seed to the sower to the sower, so we're giving the seed to the sower, you know, so we're sowing, the Holy Spirit is also so he's like, ah, oh, I've got that, see, he knows the word of God, he's perfect, the Holy Spirit already knows God's word, when he receives us, he's like, ah, oh, yeah, see, it's been planted, planted, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise in Ephesians 1, 13, sealed now, we've sown it there, so seed to the sower, both minister, see this, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seeds so on and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Both minister. So when we speak the word of God, we speak the word of God with the heavenly host. We speak the word of God because the Holy Spirit has quickened us or he's brought life to that scripture in John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. See, the spirit gives life to. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they spread and they are life. And so there it says, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seeds, so on, 
and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So there's going to be an increase here, an increase as we continue to sow words of faith. So keep increasing and adding to your faith. Add to your heart. Keep sowing scriptures. Keep sowing the word of God. Keep hearing the word of God for you and I today so that the you know, at a, at a time, at any given time, the Holy Spirit can bring back to remembrance. See, let's have a look at John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, 26, and it's page 1504. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. See, he will remember. He will bring back to remembrance. You and I, the work that we are doing is feeding the spirit man. Keep feeding him. Keep sowing. Keep speaking. Keep communicating with him. Have, through fellowship, through prayer, through attending to his words as the Lord has taught us through trusting him, trusting the Lord, through speaking Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. See, why do we do that? Because John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. The word became flesh. That's you and I. See, the word became flesh. Jesus became flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So there's not, uh, praise the Lord, hallelujah for um, Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, because there are steps. There are steps in order for you and I to arrive at doing, you know, do it, doing the work, working out our own salvation with fear and with trembling. Hallelujah. So can we please turn to a book? Uh, the book of Romans, chapter 10, please, verse 8. Uh, page uh, 1585. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. See, the word is nigh us when we have fellowship, when we hear the word of God, when we've got get the, the scriptures here, whether you're using a mobile phone to find scriptures or your iPad or a reference by way of the brethren, the word is nigh thee. Now, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, let's have a look at Hebrews 11. Let's go to Hebrews 11, eh? There's some beautiful, beautiful, true accounts of faith. And those who knew they had faith, operating in faith. Um, so, so what is faith? Hebrews 11, 1 has taught us. Faith is the substance. Oh, there you go. So it's real. Faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, so that's where I was, you know, when, when I received Jesus Christ, I received him in faith. I didn't see him, didn't know what he looked like. In the past, I had seen photos of this uh, white man with blue eyes and long hair, you know, but I didn't, he, he didn't present himself to me like that. I received him in faith. And you know what? I was touched by the, the Holy Spirit, touched my heart. I was able to believe because the word convinced me. The word convinced me in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. The word speaking to me said, Rutu, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, I was, oh, okay, I can do that. And you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. Yes, you are saved. Am I? Am I? I'm saved. And I was told that my sins and iniquities, he remembered no more, that the Lord gave me a clean slate. You know, how beautiful is to know that a preacher was sent to me to save me, to heal me, to set me free, to deliver me from the, the wicked man that I was, from the flesh man. You know, and that's where that portion in Romans chapter 10 verse, verse 15. 
So beautiful and then they preach the gospel of peace and bring bad tidings of good things. Uh, no, so I'll read from verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon them, Lord shall be saved. See, this mouth, Lord save me. 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher needed to be sent. So you and I have all been chosen, brethren, to preach the word of God. And how shall they preach except they be sent? It is, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. And if you can see here, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah, yeah. So what a beautiful time. So here, faith is the substance of things hoped for, reading in the 11th chapter of um, Hebrew. The evidence of things not seen. Now, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. See, so, so through, through the words that you and I minister and the promises that the Lord has blessed us with, and all the seed that has been that's sown to our heart, when we preach that, we frame our future. We speak our future. The word has taught us that we prophesy. Let's go there. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Praise God. And it's in this, when we, when we understand this system, this faith walk, through Jesus Christ, through the word of God, oh, hallelujah for the blessings. Amen. Hallelujah, because Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, what a, that's exciting for you and I, for me. For me, because I know that God is not slack. He's not slack consuming his promises as men count slackness. God is faithful. If we're going to preach his word, you say, okay, all right, I'll do it for you. Um, so it's the second, uh, second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So here, we, the, the word of faith, now we understand it. Is, can frame our future, not just ours and our generations to come. See, that's um, you and I, a good man, leaveth an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That there is the promises um, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, calling heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you, your children and your generations to come, I've set before you life and death blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, they're both thou and I said may live, so you and I have now been given a substance which is the word of faith now, we is, if, if you continue to read here, I'm only going to uh, grab a um, or take a couple of beautiful promises out of uh, Hebrews, can we have a look at verse 6 please verse 6 says <clears throat> But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, see, this is a promise here, a promise from God. He is a rewarder that them that, to them that diligently seek him, to you and I. Who are you and I, brethren? John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So what are we going to do? We're going to sow faith seeds into our kingdom, into here, to our heart. We'll sow faith seeds. You know, others would say, oh, <clears throat> for to I've got a plan for me and my children and this is what it's going to be it might be I'm, I'm not too sure it might be uh what don't know uh, uh, an investment or a program or something that they're investing into all you and I have to invest in is sowing seeds sowing the word of God so 
so faith, so prosperity, so joy, so love. That's it. That's all we have to do. And our Father will do the rest. He will bring the increase. See, that's the government. That, that's the, that's, that's the um, system that you and I are following. <laughs> that's the government that you and I will listen to and you and I would adhere to, and you and I would be obligated to, is to continue to increase our faith seed. Now, we know that, um, verse 7 says, by faith, Noah being warned of God, things not seen as yet, moved with fear, it's the fear of God, it's the fear of God, see, God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, so that's 2 Timothy 1.7, that's that fear there. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. That's at a time where there was no rain, where people were, the, the, the world mocked him. Well, what, are you, what are you doing? You know, he's building an ark according to the instructions that our father had given to him. But see, he heard the word of God, the instruction, and he tried to give them and entice them and say, come, come, there's going to be a flood. But they mocked him. They ridiculed him because they chose the flesh. They liked doing what they were doing. Yeah. But he didn't. And he and his household, his children, his in-laws, they were saved. The Lord gave them an instruction to take two by two of all the animals. There's also, uh, uh, where is it? Here, verse 11, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged them faithful who had promised. Now, Sarah was a queer. She was, a, she was of age. She was past her use by date, if you like, her use by date. Yet, by faith, she conceived seed. By faith. And from that, as uh, those of us who have read about Abram, see, the Lord changed their name. Their name was changed from Sarah, Sarai, Abram, Abraham, Abraham, Abram. The name, there was a changeover. There's a changeover for you and I also, brethren, an inward changeover, an inward circumcision that takes place when we continue in the word of God. And that there is the circumcision of the flesh. So denying the, the, um, the behaviors, the behaviors and the habits and the old things that we were uh, a part of when we, before we came to know who Christ is, the Lord changes us and we become new. You know, we become new vessels unto his honor. Sister and I were having a fellowship earlier. We become new. The Lord can say now, you have, we are purging. We are being purged. We are being cleansed. Sanctify them. We're being sanctified. Sanctify them through thy truth. The word is truth. See, and that's faith. And therefore, the Lord can use us as able ministers. Because why? Because we have heard his instruction and received by faith, and from that, many nations will be saved, many nations, because God can use us for the extension of his kingdom, praise God, now, here's another one, by faith, verse 17, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, now, in this, in this account alone, he uh, Abraham had been spoken to and given an instruction to sacrifice his son. Isaac didn't know it was him. So Isaac happily went along, you know, with his daddy, went up into the mount. The preparation for the sacrifice had been happening while Isaac was watching. So Abraham was being faithful. He had heard the word of God. He's like, okay, yeah. So he didn't look to the left or the right. He just continued to hear what God was saying to him. And praise the Lord, God, he heard God's voice. He knew him. See, the word has taught us without Jesus, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That's in the book of uh, John, chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice and I know them 
and they follow me. So Abraham knew the voice of our daddy. And hallelujah, praise God, he did. So it's in the book of John chapter 10, verse 27. Praise God, he did. Because why? Because at that time, it was not Isaac's son that was to be sacrificed. And he was stopped. See, there was only one. There was only one, and through his obedience, and that was the only begotten son of our father, John chapter 3, verse 16. That's why they put their portion is very important for us. It's a beautiful gift, that one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it's in that that God saw Abraham's faith and that God was able to bless Abraham and the nation. And he was the father of many nations and continues to. So his seed was blessed. And, and, and you know, when we, I just want to take us quickly, please, if we can, to have a look at the different faiths. Um, Luke chapter 9. Can we quickly go there? So when we first come in, we received faith as a seed. Uh, but we've got to water that seed. You know, we've got to continue in the word of God. And we've got to minister that seed as well so that it becomes free. Now, can we please turn to page um, 1440? Yeah, 1440. And I'm going to be reading from verse... Actually, in our time, we can take up the reading. Um, but what I would like to do, I'll just read from, no, I'll go back to 31. Oh, 30. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he, he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. <laughs> And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Wow. So our deity himself came down and spoke to them. I keep reading. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days, or who would believe them? Any of those things which they had said, who would believe them? And it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine own child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. And I was sought, now this is, this is what this man, you know, so he's got an unwell child. And he knows that the disciples were without Jesus, being taught by him, and had traveled with him, journeyed with him, and had witnessed uh, know, knowing that they had witnessed the miracles through our Lord. So verse 40 says, And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. They could not. Verse 41 says, And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. Now, this here is an example of Oh, praise the Lord, not our faith. But even those who continue in the word of God, who know the word, who know the word, who know our Jesus, you know, know who our good, the good shepherd is, the name which is above every name, the conversation which is a godly conversation, the oracles of God that are spoken to you and I, and yet faithless. Faithless. See, without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's, that's that relationship, brethren, the relationship with our Father God and with the Holy Spirit, knowing who our Jesus is. See, sow faith, speak faith or say faith and see faith. See the manifestation, the miracle come to you in Rome. 
And what happened was they folded their, you know, they were like, they slept, they folded their arms. Oh, oh, it's all right. Jesus has got it. Jesus has got us. Well, Jesus, brethren, is in you and I today. We received him. Their faith seed now is a fruit. And we can activate our faith when we activate the Holy Spirit. And we receive the blessings from our Father. All we have to do, brethren, is now give thanks and honor to our Father. Just thank you, Daddy, for this beautiful day. Thank you, Daddy, for life. Thank you, Daddy, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the tongue of the learn. Praise God. Can we please go to chapter um, 14 of the book of Matthew? Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 14. And I'm reading from 22, I'll read from, page 1354. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So he said they've had a, 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 a ministry and um, the Lord's instructed them to get on the ship. You know, all the, all the people are gone now. Verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. So our Jesus didn't get inside of the ship. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Verse 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Gee, what a beauty. That's beautiful. Yeah. Gee, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. You know, when we see the water, that's the word of God, eh? Yeah. Sanctify and clean them by the washing of the water. That's the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus walked on the sea. Now, verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, see, they seen this with their eyes. They were troubled. Oh, they were troubled saying, it is a spirit or a ghost. And they cried out for fear. Verse 27. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Gee, they thought it was a ghost on the water. Like, oh, see, and they knew him. They knew how Jesus was. He had only just been with them beforehand. Now, listen to verse 28. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, if, if, little words, big meaning, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee, uh, come unto thee on, on the water. Bid me come unto thee on the water, right? Say, so, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And he said, Jesus, he said, come. Now, and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. See, he stepped out in faith. Brethren, we step out in faith. You know, when we step out in the word of God, when we've, we've given all supplication, prayer and supplication to our Father, we step out in faith. We go about our, our day in faith. Now, verse 30, <laughs> but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. Now, he stopped and he had to look around him. See, faith or fear? There's the system. These are those, you know, that we operate in. We operate in faith. Praise the Lord. We only see what the Lord wants us to see. We operate in fear. And that's the, the, the flesh. You're only going to uh, judge after the sight of your eyes. So he then stopped and he's like, he's now looking around him and thinking, whoa, number one, I'm on the water. It's windy. It's boisterous. It's dark. You can see the in verse 25, it was dark. So darkness had come. And he sank. He began to sink. But praise the Lord. Peter knew. See, the Lord loved Peter. He loved his disciples. Peter knew to call out to him. So that's what he did. He cried saying, Lord, save me. And verse 31 says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, now listen to this, O thou of little faith, where 
for death thou dealt. So our previous reading in Luke 9.41 is a faithless nation, faithless people. This one here in verse 31 of the book of uh, Matthew 14 is little faith. Faithless, little faith. Now, if we can, let's go and have a look at, um, there's some beautiful portions that came out last week as well. Can we have a look at Luke chapter 7, please? Now, we, we, as we continue to sow seed and to continue our faith, our walk faith, walk by faith and not by sight, praise God, the spirit man within us, our Jesus within us, increases or grows. Praise God. Now, verse uh, uh, chapter 7, sorry, um, in the book of Luke. Uh, and this is uh, uh, just another witness, another witness uh, with regards to the centurion uh, reading that we had last week. And I'm going to read from this. Oh, I'll read from verse 1. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. Verse 3, and when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. So he said, Jesus is coming. I've got someone who's dear to me who's going to die. Um, I've heard of him. So he's saying, go get this man, Jesus you know, that he may heal my servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with him, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. So this is somebody who knows he's, he's given honor to our Jesus, you know, of great stature that even he himself was and felt not worthy to be able to be in his presence. Or that Jesus, you know, it's the same for Jesus to come to his home. And my servant shall be healed. So he goes, I, uh, sorry, seven, wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, See here, say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Say in a word, brethren, what words are you and I saying for us and our seed? Say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Say in a word, and my family shall be healed. Say in a word, and my, um, my household shall be healed. Say in a word. See, this, this is the word. What word are we talking about here? The word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The words of life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Verse 8 says, For I am also, I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. So he's given an explanation of this, uh, the centurion himself being a ruler, a man of authority. So he understood what authority was. Hence the reason why he was saying to the, you know, uh, why he had suggested for the Lord to say, just say in a word and my servant shall be healed. <laughs> now, verse 9, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. See, now, this great faith. Now, this is a centurion who did not know or did not follow, or was not a disciple, wasn't with Jesus, but he had belief. He had a belief system happening. Like he had faith. He had faith. Not just, he wasn't faithless. He didn't have little faith. He had great faith. He had great faith. The other two accounts were our disciples. Those that were with Jesus, that, those that had, knew the word. You know, they knew who he was. And yet the centurion had great faith. Gee, you know, that's powerful. That is powerful. And the Lord acknowledged that. He acknowledged that. Can we just quickly um, please turn over? 
to verse, oh, we're still in seven. Uh, I would like to read, please, from 36, page 1434, Luke 7, 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Verse 37, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, somebody who didn't know, you know, she was separated. She was separated from, from godly ways. She was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus said at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster book, a box full of ointment. An alabaster box full of ointment. So she come, these were the tools of her trade. She, the, these were um, uh, an alabaster box of ointment. The ointments weren't a selection that were just, you know, the, these were the, the, the best. They were of a, of a costly price. So she came and these were her, her tools. Now, verse 38, and she stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her, of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, she had an expectant heart. She had an expectant heart. As a sinner, she had had enough of it. She didn't want to do that anymore. The greatest um, or the most expensive um, uh, resources that she had, she took with her. So she brought everything before the Lord that she, you know, that would, um, that would be suffice for her business to exist. And she, she had come with an expected heart. She says, I don't want to do this anymore. And the, the tears that she was crying and weeping, and, you know, over him, and she used her hair, her own hair, to wipe her tears and kissed his feet. And then she anointed them with the ointment. Verse 39 says, Now when the Pharisee which had bitten him saw it, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. So they judged her. They were judgmental, the, the Pharisees. They judged our Jesus. They're saying, well, oh, isn't that man, isn't he a prophet? If he knew that he would know who she was, which type of woman she was, which type of sinner she was. Now, verse 40 is beautiful. When we keep reading on, Jesus answering said unto him, yes, this is what the Lord said. He broke the word. He gave an example. He gave a, he made it simple. The word is simple for you and I. And that's where the Holy Spirit is beautiful and I acknowledge him because he, he expounds the scriptures for us. He opens up the scriptures for us and he makes known the mystery. There's no mystery for you and I within the gospel. That's why we come into the gospel so we can hear exactly what Jesus is saying to you and I. Hallelujah. So he says, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he says, mm, Master, say on. So this is the Lord speaking. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors the one owed 500 piece, pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. He said unto them, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came and had not ceased to kiss my feet, my head with the oil did, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Praise the Lord. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. 48. And he saith unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that thou that forgiveth sins also? Verse 50. And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. And you know, this is the beautiful reading that's in this here, is God loves you, Jesus loves you, 
he sees that even where you are at, you come and you sit at the feet of Jesus. You come and you attend fellowship. You come and you, you, um, you, you don't cease. You don't cease. We don't cease to come to our Jesus. See, and that there is our faith. And he says, thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Beautiful, eh? You know, the revelation that I have from this here is that we truly are blessed. We truly have favor with the Lord. Can we quickly go to a portion? Um, Psalm chapter 45, verse 13. I was blessed with this last one day. I can't remember. But I was blessed with this beautiful word. The Holy Spirit knows. 45 verse 13, the king's daughter is all glorious within. Beautiful, eh? The king's daughter is glorious within. Her clothing is wrought gold. And see, we, the Lord refines us. We become a more beautiful, more favored, highly favored. When we, as we continue in his word, um, he makes even, you know, when a man's ways please the Lord, brethren, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him even his enemies to be at peace, you know, and the, the enemies here are the, um, yeah, the, the doubt, the anger, the hate, the jealousy, you know, the lies, the lies that have been presented before us, and we can speak through faith words of truth, Galatians 5.22, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, you know, what, what the Lord has given to you and us today, faith, goodness, temperance, against such there is no law, gentleness, the word is there, meek, meekness. But he, he has given us, you and I, um, the greatest gift of all, which is our Jesus. He is our Jesus. Praise God. Um, I've just, there, there's another portion here, brethren, if I can. Uh, this is familiar to you and I. We've already gone through 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Yeah, we're walking by faith and not by sight. Praise God. We have, uh, um, you know, the, the, the word taught us this morning, oh, we were, sister and I were having a fellowship about the tree of life that is in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, the tree of life that you and I have today is, um, there's a scripture in John chapter 15, verse 1. I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. See, that's the cleansing or the purging. That's the cutting away of the old man, of the flesh. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So in order for a, a, a tree to continue to live, anything that is dead comes away, so it gets pruned off. Why? So that new buds can come, you know, so that the new, the regrowth can start again. Hallelujah. And verse 3 says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth fruit, forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, we have been given, and, and I believe, you know, there'll be more scriptures to come. Uh, with regards to uh, you and I walking and living in faith, we just have to keep building and adding to and increasing the fruits of our righteousness. So if we turn to, um, let's go into the book of Corinth. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. And return, we'll go back to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 again. But I, this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man accordeth according as he proposeth on this heart. So let him give, not begrudgingly, not grudgingly, nor necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace, grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. 
may abound to every good work. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister of bread for your food, verse 10, and multiply your seed sower and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Praise God. There's another portion here just quickly. If we can go to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter. Yeah. In here. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, reading from verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever same a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Just so good. Just so the promises of God. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And of course, Galatians um, 5.22, the fruit of the spirit is love, it is joy, it is peace, it is patience or long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. There is no law. See, the law that you and I li are living today is John um, 1.17, the law that was given unto Moses that's the law of sin, bondage, and death. Um, praise God for you and I, for the law is given unto Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God bless you, brethren. Just a few scriptures to add to our um, add to our, our theme, topic, theme, and subject of faith. Faith brings miracles. Um, I pray that uh, with uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, that you will give seeds of faith given it will be given unto you in good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall you give unto your bosom shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure you meet with all it shall be measured to you again and i pray the lord uh, bless you with a hundredfold increase in jesus name amen and i'll